Hello guys and welcome to this short video. Today I'm going to just be proving that I can that the Core 2 Duo E7300 works in this gateway E4610D. Now just for proof, here's a little side panel. See my phone. There we go, E4610D. And then up top, gateway E4610D. Now if you see in the BIOS, it is recognizing the E7300. Now, for some reason, it detects the CPU being at 0.4 gigahertz with a 400 megahertz front side bus. Now that is not true. Once we boot into Windows, it'll work just fine. So I'm going to shut off the system, just shut back on. And then now we wait for Windows to boot and for this thing to post. Now this uh, this computer has an old Seagate 80 gigabyte hard drive that is not nearly as fast as an SSD. It's just going to take a while. See here, so I'm going to open up CPU-Z. So I don't care about my encryption key. Because this isn't really storing anything important. Like all it has on it currently is Firefox. Cody, CPZ, and Cinebench R15. So if you notice on here, it CPZ fully recognizes the Core 2 Duo Wolfdale 45 nanometer LGA775. Now the clock speed does go up and down between 1.6 and 2.66 gigahertz. Now Windows is snappy on this, other than it being on this old, slow, and like extremely old and slow hard drive. Windows does detect the uh, Core 2 Duo 7300. Now let's go and run Cinebench. Now on this copy of Cinebench, I do have some benchmarks of some other CPUs, other Core 2 Duos. Which they are two Conroe models, which if you don't know, Conroe is the 65 nanometer Core 2 Duo. This is 45. So Cinebench fully recognizes the CPU just fine. And then what we want is this CPU to score above 96. So I'm going to run the CPU test. Now for GPU, it doesn't really matter because it's pretty garbage. It's got a Radeon 4350 in here. Now I would do the B cell mod, which that is where you grab some tape and cover up two pins, but this motherboard inside this case does not support the uh, the faster front side bus speeds. It only supports 1066 and 800 megahertz. So that means a CPU like the E4400 which uses the uh, 800 megahertz would work fine, and the E6300, which uses the uh, the 1066 front side bus, that worked just fine. If you see here, here's some other comparisons. I got a Core 2 Quad Q9400 in here. A I wait, that's a stock one, the i5. Now next time I do one of these sort of proving videos. I, the, the only reason why I'm recording this video is because I cannot find a single piece of documentation on the internet about this computer working with this CPU. Now, um, did not do any BIOS updates, but I will give the BIOS version in the description if I can find it on this system. It seems to be doing it pretty well for an old ancient dual core. Now, believe it or not, there are some systems that do not support the E7300. Like I had this HP, or I had this HP. It came with the 4400, but I downgraded it to the 6300 because I wanted to cheaply sell it to a friend. But that did not support the 7300. Trust me, I tried it. All it would do is beep, and it would not turn on. I could not get into Windows or the BIOS. The only way to fix it is to put the old CPU back in. So the best way to know if your, CP, if your motherboard will support these better Wolfdale CPUs, like the 7000 and the 8000 series Core 2 Duos, is 
make sure your motherboard supports if you want to use a 7000 series like I am here make sure you have the Intel 965 chipset now if you want to run the newer ones I'm not sure but like the 1333 ones but I believe this motherboard does not support the Core 2 Duo Conro ones that are 1333 which are the E6550 I think the E6750 so uh, apparently my phone only had 4.8 megabytes of storage available and it cut off the previous recording. Yeah, I didn't know it was that bad. So Cinebench just finished. We have a score of 140, which that is considerably higher than the 4400. I'm gonna be ending the video here. Remember to like, comment, rate, and subscribe.